Hey guys, it's Alex over at Laser Everything, and in this next section of videos for the ultimate guide to laser processing, we're going to be covering how to figure out what kind of laser source you're working with. And to keep things simple, we're going to do separate videos for fiber, UV, CO2 RF tubes, CO2 glass tubes, and diode laser modules. This means that we're going to be opening up our lasers in most cases to try to ascertain this information, and I just want to remind you before we get started. I'm not an electrical expert and if you're uncomfortable or unsure about what you're doing when opening up your machines, make sure to consult an electrical expert before doing so so that you can stay safe as there are inherent risks to digging around inside of your machines where you don't belong. Furthermore, this is very likely going to void your warranty in most cases, so just be prepared for that eventuality if you decide to go digging for this information on your own. Before going nuclear, you can always try to reach out to your manufacturer to see if you can get a straight answer about the type of source and its specs before moving on with this section of tutorials. Oftentimes, they'll happily share that information with you, and if you can get it with them and you trust your manufacturer is being accurate with that information, then that is a preferable way to go about this. That said, let's cut the sticker and dive into CO2 RF tubes. This episode isn't going to be particularly long, but CO2 RF tubes are some of the most difficult sources to identify only because of the label placement. We'll talk about that in a minute, but first, let's locate the RF tube. On gantry machines, it's usually in a compartment in the rear, which can be accessed by either flipping up the top, which is the case on most machines, but there are others where you may need to do some disassembly in order to find where it's housed. This laser has a glass tube, but it is a good example the Reno Pro by Momport requires a complete disassembly of the rear in order to access where this laser tube is located. I'd advise you against doing this unless you know what you're doing and you know how to get it back together. Galvo lasers, it's a bit easier to find. The RF tube is typically located in the laser path area and is generally stored within a casing. While it's generally easy to access the laser tube on either of these laser types, you do need to exercise caution. Once you know where your laser source is located, you'll have to find the label. Unfortunately, that can be pretty difficult. My CO2 Galvo required that I unmount the laser source from the laser path in order to gain access to the underside of the component. This is no small task. By undoing these mounts, it all but guarantees that I will have to perform a complete realignment of my CO2 laser beam when reinstalling the source. If this doesn't sound like something you're up to, I would consider getting in touch with your manufacturer to see if you can get reliable information from them on what source your machine machine contains. If for some reason that's not an option though, you can continue to unmount the device, and here on the bottom of my laser source you can see all of the information that we're after. In this example we're looking at my coherent laser source, which is a C30A. We also get a part number and a serial number. As an added bonus we can also see the tested wattage here, 37 watts, so even though this is a coherent 30 watt source, it does have a peak output power when tested a little bit higher. Once you have the information you need, you can go ahead and start putting your laser back together. This is not going to be an episode about how to align your CO2 RF tube, and though we may talk about that later, in the meantime, I would really discourage you from disturbing your alignment unless you absolutely have to, or you feel extremely confident in your ability to reassemble your machine. For now though, you've got your source information, so what do you do with it? Well, of course, you can always Google search things, but I'd also recommend heading over to makearmy.com io where you can see our laser source database and if we go ahead and give that a click you'll see a ton of different laser sources listed here with more information about them let's see if we can find that 30 watt source and if we go ahead and give that a click we can see a ton of information about our laser we can see our laser's wattage the wavelength we can also see the operating voltage so what kind of power supply it requires you can also find the pulse repetition rate or your frequency range for your laser in these tables as well. So this is a great resource and again you can find this at makearmy.io under the laser source database to get all the information you need to set your laser up properly inside of Lightburn once we get to that point. So this is something you're going to want to bookmark because we're going to come back to this page over and over again. If for some reason you can't find your source in this database or your source is missing information, feel free to reach out to me and let me know. We can get it added if you do have the data for it. If you don't, I'm sure we can find some 
somebody that has a similar source in the community, hit us up over at Discord or at masters.lasereverything.net if you want to support the channel, and we can help you discover the accurate details about your laser source so you can get your machine set up properly. That's all for now. There's a lot more to discuss as far as what's going on inside of this machine, but we're going to save that for a little later on in the guide when we do our basic laser anatomy video. So if you're curious about what everything inside of this case does, hang on. That video should be coming at you in at most a month or two when we get a little bit further along in the course and we've got our machine operational. So we'll swing back around to that later. For now though, guys, I think that's it. That should be everything you need in order to get the basic information about your laser source that we're going to need when we move on to installing and configuring Lightburn. I hope you found that helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.